Hi, Kevin here. Today we're fixing a butternut squash pie. And the first thing you will need is a butternut squash. What I have here is one of the squash that I grew in my garden over the summer. And it weighs about three pounds. And what you do is cut the squash lengthwise in half and then remove the seeds which is not hard to do, and then brush each half with a little olive oil. Also, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and then this is going to bake, uh, actually I need to turn these upside down. This is going to bake until the squash is perfectly tender. That will take 40 to 50 minutes. Meanwhile, we can make the pie crust. Now, I'm going to make an all butter pastry crust for this pie. And it starts with one and a half cups of all purpose flour. And put those in the food processor. And then add two tablespoons of regular granulated sugar. You could use just one tablespoon if you'd like. In fact, you could omit the sugar entirely. And also add a half teaspoon of salt. I like using the food processor because it's so fast. It's going to give this a quick mix. Done. Then, I'm going to add a half cup, that's 113 grams, of diced, unsalted butter. And this is very cold butter. Just scatter that over the flour. And then, I'm going to pulse the machine several times just to break up the butter. Let me show you. So what you're looking for are just little tiny, oh, pea-sized bits of butter. <coughs> and then, excuse me, and then, let's see, I want to put the lid back on. I'm going to add one third cup of ice water minus the ice, and I'm going to add this through the feed tube while the machine is running. And I'm going to let this mix just until the dough starts to mass on the blade. Here we go. There. Told you that was fast. Actually, it's both fast and foolproof. Hang on, I'm just going to clean the decks. Make room here. And then dump the dough onto a work surface which for me is this marble board, roll up your sleeves and then gather the dough into a ball. Pick up any stray bits, move you down a little bit so you can see. And then flatten the ball into a disc this in cling film. See, I need a little more cling film. A 
And there's our French pastry dough. And then this needs to chill oh, for 30 minutes to an hour. I'm going to let it chill while the butternut squash is roasting. So we'll be back. Now, I also wanted to tell you that last night I made another butternut squash pie. Here it is. And although it was absolutely delicious, it wasn't very sweet. In fact, um, I'd go so far as to say it was more savory than sweet, which is fine because, you know, it's terrific for breakfast as well as dessert. But today I'm going to be adding a little more sugar to this. And as you can see, I've already eaten half of the pie purely for the sake of science. I do have to taste test my recipes, you know? Okay, I'll see you in a minute. All right, here comes the squash. There, and as you can see, the squash skin has blistered. And now you want to test it with a knife. And if a knife goes through easily, as mine does, then you know the squash is Perfectly cooked. So now we have to flip these over. Oh, look at that beautiful golden color. That's beta carotene, the healthful compound in butternut squash and carrots and well, all winter squash. So now, we have to let this cool, well, at least let it uh, cool down until we can handle it. Uh, and then we will be scraping out the flesh. So I'm going to let mine cool down. Meanwhile, we can roll out the pie crust. Oh, also, lower the oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, I'm going to roll out my pie crust on this pastry frame. And I like the pastry frame or pastry cloth because nothing sticks to it. You just rub some flour into the cloth and that's it. You don't have to keep adding more and more flour. And then I'm going to roll this out into a 12 inch diameter circle. Let's see. Am I crust is still a little too cold, so here's what you do to make the, the dough malleable. Use brute force. Just pound it with a rolling pin. Flip it over. Do the same thing. All right. I think it will be submissive for us. And then roll. And when you roll, start at the center of the dough disc and just roll to within, oh, an inch or a half inch from the edge. And then keep turning the dough as you work. And I never know when I'm rolling out dough if, so, if I should do the whole job on camera. I think I will do it on camera today because maybe some of you have never rolled out a pie crust before. And I will say that this crust, this all butter French pastry crust, is a joy to work with. It rarely cracks. It's just really, really easy to roll out. I think part of the fact that it's so easy to deal with is because we made the dough in the food processor. And as you can see, this really doesn't take long at all. I just have to bring it out a little more. I have a circle here that indicates 12 inches in diameter. 
and I'm going to shore up the edge. Uh, look at this finger. My hands are so chaffed because, well, I've been washing my hands like constantly and also using the uh, alcohol-based hand sanitizers because of the pandemic. I'm trying to be a good citizen and stay healthy. Let me know if your hands are all broken out from excessive washing and, and uh, sterilizing. Okay, I think we are good. Make sure we have a nice disc here. Okay, then I'm going to fold the dough into a triangle and then fetch my nine inch pie plate. This is nine inches in diameter and it is one and three quarter inches deep. And then what you do is center the point of the triangle in the center of the pie plate and then unfold the dough. This way you can avoid stretching the dough. You really don't want to stretch pastry dough because it shrinks in the oven and then you can end up with trouble. Okay. And then we can make some kind of decorative edge. So what I'm going to do is just fold the dough over inward like this. I should do it this way so you can see. One nice thing about doing videos is that I can show you rather than just explain in words what these techniques are. Okay, and then to crimp, I take my uh, thumb and index finger and hold them this way and then I use my, the index finger from my other hand and I push the dough in between like this. Maybe I should move you a little closer. This doesn't take long at all. I never use the uh, Pillsbury ready-made pie crust because, well, to me, it just tastes like cardboard. It tastes like cardboard and it has the texture of cardboard. So here we are. And then I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator while I wait for the butternut squash to cool down. All right, well, my butternut squash has cooled, but not to room temperature. You can let yours cool completely. I'm in a rush because I'm hungry and I want to try this new version of the pie. So what you need is two cups of the butternut squash and you just scoop it out of its shell. Let's see, do I have two cups here? Yes, I do. So, and if you have any leftover squash, just eat it. Okay, then, to fetch my cleaned out food processor, and I'm going to process this just to get a very nice silky puree. So in it goes. going to process just for a moment. This won't take long at all. Beautiful. 
perfectly pureed. Okay, we can get our filling ingredients together. Hold on. All right, here's my pie shell, and I did put it on a baking sheet. And I wanted to tell you that since this is not a pre-baked pie crust, in order to stop the bottom crust from turning soggy as it cooks, I'm going to take a tip from Stephanie Jaworski at thejoyofbaking.com and I'm going to crush up five ginger snap cookies. And these are just El Cheapo store brand ginger snap cookies. Cheap, but delicious. And to crush them, I do this. Just take the rolling pin, cover your ears, Sorry about all the noise. And then roll the little bits so that they're crushed fairly finely. This is a job your four-year-old child could do. Assuming you have a four-year-old child, I do not. I have many children, but they are all four-legged and totally inept in the kitchen. Okay, we're, we are crushed enough. Now, here's the pie shell. You simply pour the cookie crumbs into the shell and then spread them out. Yeah, I did this last night for the pie and it did seem to make a big difference. Also, I really love the uh, little hint, the little hint of ginger. Ginger and butternut squash go very well together. Okay, on to the filling. So you need a big bowl, move you up, and to the bowl we're going to add three large eggs. And beat the yolks, and then whisk. Yeah, you really want to break up the eggs. The filling, by the way, is actually a custard. It's very soft and velvety and, well, it's very delicious. But I think today's version will be even more delicious than the version I made yesterday. Then we need to whisk in. Uh, well, yesterday I used a half cup of packed brown sugar. Today I'm going to use regular granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup. And the reason for that is because the brown sugar, I felt, made the, uh, the filling very dark. It was very dark brown. And I want to at least try to maintain the golden beta carotene color. Uh, in this pie. Okay, then we need some seasonings. I'm going to use a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Yum. And a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I love the scent of nutmeg. Also going to add, well first I'm going to beat these in. Also going to add a half teaspoon of salt. Salt. 
salt will help bring out all of the other flavors in the pie. And then, I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, vanilla extract, half teaspoon. This is my own homemade vanilla extract. It's really potent because it has been marinating for, well, about a year now. It's good stuff. Now clutch your pearls because the final, or next to final ingredient is three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. which for me is delicious. This is going to be a very rich custardy pie. And finally, we have to whisk in the beautiful golden butternut squash. And I better take this blade out of here. We don't want this blade in the pie. Be a real surprise. I think I've got all of it in there. And then just whisk to combine. Boy, I hope this video isn't too long. You know, when my videos are too long, People click off, like, halfway through. Get on with it, Kevin! Okay. We're good. Here's my cookie line pie shell. In goes the filling. Yum. I'm going to grab it. Spatula to make sure I get all of this filling in here. And by the way, it's a cold, gloomy, rainy day today. So I think this pie is going to put a little sunshine into the day. Alright, and then this goes directly into the 375 degree oven until it's set. That will take 45 to 50 minutes. So I'll come back when the pie is done. And here's the pie fresh out of the oven. And let me show you. You'll know the pie is done when it just jiggles slightly in the center. And to test it further, you can take a knife, insert it, and if the knife comes out mostly clean, you'll know the pie is done. I'm going to let this sit here until it cools, and then we can have a taste. Here's the pie, and I have to say, I do like how this one has the golden color. I'm really glad I did not use the brown sugar this time. And here's my first, but probably not my only serving. So let's see. Here's what it looks like. Oh my. Oh, this is heavenly. The filling is very light, but it's, it's very creamy. Well, it's very custard-like, because it is a custard. And here you can see the, well, I think you can see the little cookie crumbs, the ginger snap crumbs that we put at the bottom of the pie. And the, the bottom crust is not soggy. Yum. I should also mention that this pie 
does not at all taste like pumpkin pie. It tastes like butternut squash pie. And that's just what I wanted. So I hope you'll give this pie a try. And I will post the list of ingredients in the description box below. And then later this week, I will probably post the printable recipe over on my website. And of course, I will put that link below. So thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and tap the little bell icon to receive notifications. And uh, please post a comment below. I do read all of your comments and I really love hearing from you. All right, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time with another delicious recipe. Bye for now.